Hello guys, Alex the Grumpy One back again. I hope you're all well. So today I got the Tiguan in. Um, the reason for that is I was driving it home the other day and there was a loud bang coming from the front and um, it was a front spring that broken at the top. It actually come off of the mount, so it's actually hitting the body now. So it was nightmare driving it back to the barn. Um, so I got the new spring here. Funny enough, I had a look and the other side one is broken as well, but just on the end, but I know it's not really a massive issue, but it will be bad enough to fail an MOT, and I got an MOT in a couple of months anyway, so I'm going to replace both sides, but I'm only going to show you one, because they're obviously the same. What I was going to say, guys, uh, this type of suspension is going to be similar on many of the back group cars, because uh, I know I had Audi Q3 in the past, and it was exactly the same, so this might help quite a lot of you with different cars from the back group. Uh, so what I'm going to do is obviously show you how to remove the spring, how to get the shock absorber out of there, what tools you're going to need and what parts you obviously need. I'm going to put everything in the description below. What I'm going to ask you guys, I'm obviously doing the job on the car lift. Um, it is possible to do the job on the jack stands, but you need to be very careful and it needs to be quite high as well. Uh, because you're going to understand why. So yeah, if you're doing it guys, then please be very careful with the spring compressor because when the spring is compressed, there's a lot of uh, power in there and it can cause some serious injury. So please be careful. Uh, my main reason for doing the video is in case you're obviously doing the job just to give you guidance what you're going to need and tools you're going to need uh, to do the job. So yeah guys, I think I'm going to start. Like I said, I'm going to do this side and yeah, let's get the wheel off and crack on. Right guys, so the wheel is off now, I just want to um, tell you quickly what we're going to need to do here. So the anterior bar link will need to come off, off of there, so you need to make sure that it's clean, as clean as possible, and um, in case you obviously haven't got the replacement one, you need to reuse it, so I don't want the nut to get seized up on there because that's going to cause a lot of issues. So like I said, make sure it's clean and use some um, lubricant on there. Also we're going to need to take some brackets off of here because what we're going to do is slide the hub off the shock and then remove the shock that's going to be held by three bolts at the top. So you're going to need to take the nut off of here and get the bolt out as well. So make sure that is all clean, the thread. And yeah, we're going to start by doing all of this now, guys. Right, guys, so you can use the wire brush on that to clean it as much as possible. Because like I said, the end bar link will need to come off at least off of there. You can also use the adapter on the drill like I got here. That makes it easier. There we are. That looks clean enough. The reason I'm saying this guys because it is like I said very important to get uh, this as clean as possible to get the nut off because you don't want to end up seizing up the nut on there because sometimes the tool gets um, stuck in there or just round it off and then you can't hold it by any means even with the uh, more grips on the other side so yeah uh, that is definitely an important step to make sure that you can reuse the anterior bar link right guys so after spraying some maintenance spray on there to make it easier all you need is 80 mil uh, spanner in this case I know some people use the gun on there uh, but like I said it can get seized up so what you're going to need is spline socket inside there to lock it in and to hold the spline socket and undo the nut. But um, in some cases, some of the links come with slight groove on the inside that you can get either spanner or more grips on the other side and they obviously hold it while you're undoing the nut. So there's many different options of doing this job, guys. I'm gonna try this way. Right guys, so for this job I bought myself a US Pro bit set, which is a great set to have guys, and it's very reasonable price as well. So you got the spline tool in there that I'm gonna need to lock in there, and also gonna have a lot of other different uh, bits that I need to work on the van group cars or anything else. So I'm gonna get the right bit out of there. 
Right guys, so here we are, we're gonna need spline bit um, six. So I usually would knock that in a little bit with the hammer. So I give it a gentle tap there, just to make sure it's in. Then you're gonna have an adapter that comes with that set. Put it on there and try and do the 18 knot now. It's gonna be tight. Like I said, cleaning the thread is gonna make it a lot easier. There we are. Sometimes you either have to force it up or down to get that off of there. That's the anti-roll bar link off. Right guys, so to get the bolt out of there that holds the shock in the hub, uh, you're gonna need to clean the thread, like I said, and you got the 18 mil uh, nut on there. So you're gonna need the spanner on that, or the socket, the impact gun socket, whatever you're gonna use. And I'm myself gonna use this little set that I got for the VAC group from US Pro. And you got three different size adapters there for the spline sockets. So they're the impact one, they're stronger ones. And we're gonna need M14 uh, that gonna go on the other side. So you're gonna need to fit it on the other side to hold the bolt while you're undoing the nut. All right, so let's clean that quick. That will do. Right guys, so at this stage, before we take the bolt out, I just wanted to let you know, um, you obviously have to, once it's out, you're gonna undo a couple more bits and then you have to pull the whole hub down enough to um, take the whole shock out of there and you're gonna to need to go quite a bit and for that you will need to pull the lower arm down with the hub. Uh, what I was gonna say, they do recommend actually taking the drive shaft out of the hub uh, to make it easier so you'll be able to pull it lower and for that you will need uh, one of them sets, well that's why I use anyway, because you got multi-spline bolt there and they're going to be very tight, so I use the impact set um, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be 24, yeah that's 24 on there, multi-spline 24, because that will be very tight on there guys, um, you either use a gun or use um, a massive uh, bar on there to undo it and also don't forget you will have to torque it up what I have to say is sometimes these bolts, they're stretch bolts, so you can only use them once, so you might need to buy a new bolt before you do the job. Um, so in this case, it's not. Uh, so I'm gonna be uh, trying to do the job first without taking the drive shaft out, see if it's possible. I'm gonna use my big bar to pull on the arm to pull it down enough. Hopefully it'll be just enough to get the shock absorber out of there, but we're gonna see now in a second. If not, then I will have to undo the bolt and obviously I try and get the drive shaft out, which is another issue. Sometimes they do get seized up in the hub, the drive shafts. Uh, what I do is I put the bolt back in, uh, quite a few threads, and then use a rubber hammer to knock it out, to release it. If not, if you don't want to do that, you can also buy a tool that you can uh, fit with your wheel nut bolts. And it's like pretty much a bearing puller, and that will, um, push your drive shaft in and obviously release it. So there's a choice of doing that as well. I haven't got that tool, so I'll have to try and do it my way in case I will have to take the drive shaft out. So I just wanted to let you know, guys. Okay, so here's the other thing that you need to do as well, is make sure you take the 10 mil out of there that holds the whole bracket there with the brake pipe and ABS pipe. Uh, so you need to be careful with this so you don't pull on the uh, pipe or uh, the cable. So just clean it off, get 10 mil socket on there. And this will be tight. Just the reason why I'm taking this guys is because I'm gonna be spraying, maintenance spraying there to make it uh, easier to go down and I will be hitting it with the hammer there and I don't wanna damage the bracket or damage the hose. So being out of the way, you're gonna make it a lot easier for me. All right guys, so I'm gonna get the bolt out. I got the M14 socket on there. I'm gonna hold it on there. Make sure that it goes in properly. 
and I'm gonna try and use my impact gun to undo the 18 mil, see if that works. There we go, lovely. Uh, so you're probably gonna find out that the bolt is actually seized in there, so I might have to try and loosen it up by try and doing it. So I'm gonna try and get the gun on that side and uh, tap it in the same time and see if the bolt comes loose, because obviously it's definitely seized in there now. All right guys, so I'm gonna spray some lubricant there probably there already as well so it just goes inside the crack and now I'm gonna tap around it so that's what you usually do kind of release the bolt in there uh, I've got the bit on there I'm gonna try and use the gun to try and turn it Nah, it's quite solid on there. That's not very good. Right guys, so I've put the nut back on there while I'm going to be hitting it around because I don't want the hammer to slip and hit the thread. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is spray stuff on there. Um, I've been hitting it. Where's the rubber hammer around it and in front of it? Um, also, what I'm going to try and do now is get a um, chisel and get in the cut, which is what you have to do anyway to open up the hub. We're gonna get it in there and hit it with the hammer to try and open it up now, and that should hopefully loosen up the, the bolt in there. So I'm gonna try and get it in there, and obviously hit it with the hammer to open it up. stuck in there now but I think it did open because you can see that some of the stuff start coming off some of the rust on the bolt so hopefully that done the trick so I need to get this out now I'm kind of glad that this is happening actually because if this happens in your car at least you know what you have to do so I did open up a little bit guys now I'm gonna try and get the socket on the other side again with the gun and try and undo it. There you go, let's start moving. That's great. Brilliant. So do it up and then do it a couple of times. There we go. That's better. Right guys, so I think that is alright now because when I get the socket on there, it's spinning freely now, look. So it's brilliant. We just get the nut off of there. Right guys, so the bolt is out now as you can see. And that's what we were dealing with. There's a lot of rust in there and that's where it was all seized up. So we definitely need to make sure that we're gonna uh, clean that with wire brush or wire wheel or etc. when it goes back in. Right guys, so at this stage, we're ready to open up the hub so the shock comes off. And for that, there's a special tool that you can use. I personally haven't got one. I had to borrow it from my mate Gibbons. Um, so this is the special tool. Let me just focus on it. All you do pretty much is, as you can see the shape of it, you get it in there like that, and then you turn it with your half inch um, ratchet, and that will open it up. As you can see, I got like an oval shape on it. Uh, so let me get it on the socket and see how it works, because I haven't used one myself before. So get it in there. Like I said, if you haven't got the tool, use the chisel, like that's what I was going to do anyway. But my mate asked me to try this tool, see how it works. So here we are. Oh yeah, look at that. So that stayed in there now. And I can see it opened up, because I can see the gap now. Now That's brilliant, then you just release it. So let me just do it again. Lovely, look at that. So just leave the tool in there. And it's open now, so now you're ready to get the tool and start pulling the hub down to, uh, for the shock to come out of there. Right guys, so here we are, I've got the tool here. I'm gonna set it up in the right position. Obviously make sure it's nice and secure on there. It's in the right place. And once it's set up, uh, like I said, you can put your leg around this bit uh, to apply the pressure. And that's why I took the bracket off. Uh, so you got space there to hit with the hammer just to give it that uh, vibration to start letting it go and you're obviously going to start seeing that the clean bit's going to start coming out. Um, what I was going to say, we're trying to do it without taking the drive shaft out guys, 
Uh, so I might remove the anti-roll bar link off the other side and that way I'll be able to pull the anti-roll bar down uh, low enough so the drive shaft doesn't hit it. But like I said, we're gonna try it and see how we get on. If not, obviously I will have to take the drive shaft out. So yeah, let's start hitting it there and see if we're gonna start sliding off. All right guys, let's see if we're gonna start moving. So I got my leg and weight on it. I'm gonna start hitting it there. There you go, as you can see, it starts sliding off now. Um, at this stage, you can spray a bit more maintenance spray in there. Lovely. There we are, guys. Brilliant. So at this stage, we don't have to take the drive shaft out. So that's brilliant news. I'm well happy with that. Uh, they're going to save us uh, a lot of messing about. Right, guys, as you can see, the tool worked very well. Obviously, I was showing you how it was coming out of there, but all I was doing, I had my leg on there, and pretty much, once it's secure on your lower arm, I was just supporting it with my weight, um, and that was enough to give it enough pressure while I was hitting it to pull it down. And honestly, trust me, on this car, it definitely made the job a lot easier, because if you just had a normal long bar, it would be a lot more complicated when you do it on your own. And when I done it on the Audi, it didn't actually go enough uh, to get the shock out. But this, obviously, because you're applying a lot more pressure on it, all of your weight, um, it obviously come out. It's perfect. It worked very well, guys. So I definitely recommend having a tool like this um, in your garage or workshop because it does make your life a lot easier. All right, guys. So as you can see, the tool worked perfectly. I'm well happy with that. Uh, we got the whole shock out of there. Obviously, I would keep the tool on there, pulling it down. I just use something to keep the hub down. Make sure that you're not pulling on any of the cables or hoses, that you're not damaging them. And where we are now, guys, um, I would say be careful as well when you're working on a slightly different car that your drive shafts don't pop out and stop leaking, start leaking oil or etc. from the gearbox. So make sure you're careful with that. And at this stage, like I said, we're ready to undo the three uh, bolts that we got at the top uh, to get the whole shock out. Right guys, so now we can go under the bonnet once obviously the shock is out of there and we can get this clip off so we can lift the plastic cover off. So it just slides off, put it somewhere safe and now we are able to lift this up so you can get the three bolts uh, that hold the shock to the top there. I usually mark the bolts up so I'll put the uh, mount back in the right place. Uh, so I'm going to do that in a second. Let me just get light in there and start undoing them. Right guys, so I got my light unit in there, shining on three uh, bolts. Hopefully you're going to be able to see them in there. Um, so there's three of them. Uh, what I'm going to say is they do recommend to take the whole cover off so it's easier to get to the bolts guys. But there's enough room to get a ratchet with 13 mil uh, sockets on there to undo them because it's a bit of a pain getting the wipers, both of them off, just to get the cover off. So like I said, I'm gonna do it my way and uh, get the 30 mil on there and undo them. So I'm gonna do them nice and slowly. Don't forget while you're undoing this, leave one uh, slightly tight on it so you can uh, hold the shock at the bottom with one hand and undo it last bolt uh, so you can support the shock so it doesn't just drop down. Right guys, so this is just a quick clip just to show you where the bolts are. As you can see, one is there, the other one is right here, and the other one got the socket on it. This is just to show you obviously where they are. And like I said, just mark one up so you know that the mount's gonna go back uh, where it was. Right guys, so I removed the last bolt at the top and rested it on there on the hub so it didn't just drop out. Uh, now I got my bar in there uh, to pull on the arm, uh, but you have to be careful because the spring is not actually on the mount so it's off it's resting on the body so I need to be very careful when I'm pulling this off because there's going to be uh, a bit of spring tension on it let's have a look if it come out oh there you go it's a bit tight in there as you can see the spring is not completely secure so I need to be very careful with it now Right guys, so the shock absorber is out now. What we have to do now is compress the spring uh, to obviously undo the top nut and remove it. So for that, I got a spring compressor. 
I haven't used it yet, as you can see it's still in the box, so I'm going to open the box up and obviously have a look, set it up and then it's going to be ready for us to compress the spring. Alright guys, so here we got our shock, I've set up my spring compressor now, I'm going to do a video on the review and demo of this spring compressor, if you're interested guys, it's definitely a handy tool to have if you're working on springs. Um, so we're going to fit that in there, make sure that everything is nice and secure and the best thing about this spring compressor is the top mount on it, the uh, part that holds the spring at the top is adjustable, it's fully adjustable because some of them got the same part at the top as they got at the bottom and they're not exactly ideal in my opinion uh, because for some of the springs they might have slight angle that you need to pull them slightly more inside or outside and having these adapters here it's going to do that job so you can adjust the spring however you want. So definitely check out my review video on the spring compressor guys. Um, but what I'm going to say is it's definitely very important to make sure that everything's secure and in place, everything's done up uh, because there's going to be a lot of compression there, a lot of force of the spring. So you need to make sure everything's safe when you're compressing it guys. Right guys, just to let you know, I haven't compressed it yet, but once it's compressed you're going to need a uh, Allen key 7 in there to lock the shock, the strut that's coming out and you're going to need one of them spanners with 21 on top of it, obviously it might be different not depending if it's original one or not, but in this case it's 21, uh, so you're going to need to hold that with the right chip, get the spanner on there, hold that with the right chip while you're doing it, or you can also try an air gun or impact gun on it, but you need to be careful with that, so this is the appropriate way of doing this. Right guys, so once everything's secure, let's start compressing it. You need to remove the pressure off the spring, off the top mount. So that's what we're doing now. Like I say, just make sure that everything's nice and secure in there because this is very important. This is probably the most dangerous bit of the job that we're doing today. So as you can see, the top mount is off now. There's no pressure on it anymore off the spring. So now we're ready to undo the nut and take the top mount off and release the pressure on the spring. Right, so like I said guys, I'm going to try and use my gun on this, see if it comes undone, because I have sprayed it with maintenance spray and cleaned the thread, so it should be good. There you go guys, so the nut is off now, now we can take the top mount off and release the pressure off the spring. There we are, that's the top mount off. Right guys, so now we are ready to release the pressure, so just press the pedal slowly, there we are, that's releasing the pressure on the spring, and at this stage, as you can see they're free now, at this stage you are safe to get the spring off of there and obviously uh, rectify everything and fit the new spring on. Right guys, so at this stage there's two important things to do, obviously the first one is check if the new spring is the right spring for your car. Obviously, hopefully it will be, but just obviously check because the bottom is different from the top. Uh, so have a look at the bottom. I know my top bit is broken, but I can have a look at the bottom. And as you can see, the angle looks the same. Uh, the place we're gonna sit looks right as well. So it looks like this is the right spring. Obviously you can put the top mount in here as well to see if you're locating properly. And speaking of the top mount, that's the other thing that you will need to check. Uh, because it got bearings in there, you need to check if it's turning smoothly in there. If not, you can buy a new top mount, uh, which sometimes is the case. I mean, my one doesn't look great, but for today, for the purpose of the video, it's rotating, it's fine. It's just obviously got wear on it and where the spring hit it a little bit. But I am going to reuse it, obviously, so I can finish the video. Right, guys, so after checking everything, the top bearing and set truck, cleaning everything up, uh, you're ready to put the new spring in. Like I said, don't forget to check which side is at the bottom. So it's this one. So locate that in there properly. So as you can see guys, at the bottom there, let me just lift it up a little bit. You got the little stop for the spring. That's where it's supposed to locate. So make sure it sits in there, secure. And now we're gonna be ready to put the top bit on. All right guys, I think we're in place now. Should be in the right place to start pumping it up. Let me just start doing it up. So you need to be very careful at this stage, guys, because there's a lot of pressure. There we are, that should be enough. Slide the top mount on there. And 
I'll stick out a bit more. Yeah, so it should be enough to start the nut up now. Brush it a bit more. Let me just do it up slightly. And undo it to locate it in place. Right guys, so I readjusted everything so it sits in place properly uh, when you let it go. So don't forget to do the nut up. I'm gonna put the torque setting for this in the description below uh, so you know what you have to do with it. And obviously then once everything's in place, you're gonna be um, ready to release it and let the mount sit on top of there so the bearing is in the right place. And obviously release the spring and just take them off and then we're ready to start reassembling the shock absorber. Okay, so at this stage we're ready to use our magical tool again to pull the uh, whole arm down and obviously get the shock in there. You have to locate the three bolts at the top there, make sure they're right. Start by placing it in there. Obviously, press down on the arm. There you go. This is going to support it slightly there. And then we have to lower the car and try and start them bolts up first. Right guys, so at this stage I cleaned my bolts and put a bit of grease on them to make sure the thread is nice and clean. Uh, so all I have to do now is get hold of the shock there, put the light at the top and try and align the thread here so I can start the bolts up. There you go, the first one is starting now. Just do them up slightly and start pushing that back in. Right guys, so at this stage you're ready to uh, start putting the shock back in the hub. So you're gonna need your tool again to open it up at the back there like we've done um, to get it out. And uh, you might need um, water pump grips like this to turn the shock slightly to the right or left to align obviously with the hole where you're gonna be sliding in because uh, you got a little locator there that you need to make sure they're gonna fit in the hole first. Right, so if you look there, that's the locator. You're gonna need to fit in the cut there. Um, so that's what you have to do. Right guys, so this is where everyone uses different tools to push it back up. I mean, it depends if you're doing it on the floor or not. If you're doing it on the floor, you can use a trolley jack uh, just to jack it up, start jacking up the lower arm for that to start sliding back in. Because I'm on the lift, I'm gonna use my transmission jack, which is pretty much a similar thing. I'm gonna be applying pressure to start pushing it up and in the same time adjusting the hub uh, for it to start going back on, obviously making sure it's all aligned. So let's start pumping the jack a little bit and just adjusting the steering if I have to slightly. There you go, it's already going back in. Right, so I'm gonna carry on pumping guys and as you can see, how they're gonna be sliding in. There you go, nice and easy, look at that. That's brilliant. So you'll see the mark, obviously if you fit a new shock, you're not gonna see the mark, but it needs to go past the locking part on the shock so you can fit that bolt back in, uh, which we're gonna clean now, and obviously do it up so it's secure and tight in there. At this stage, I can take the tool out now, like I said. Let me just turn it quick and it'll come out easily. So it's definitely worth having a tool like this, guys. If not, like I said, you can use the chisel. Right guys, so this stage you need to make sure, like I said, that the locator of the shock went past the hole, so the hole is clear for you to push the bolt through. Because if it hasn't gone all the way in, then you're obviously not gonna be able to get the bolt through there. So I'm gonna give it a slight tap. I've looked at the hole with the light and it did go past, but because there's quite a bit of corrosion in there, it's struggling to get all the way through. So I just give it a slight tap there, and as you can see, the bolt is all the way through now. Now we can put the nut on. All right guys, so once the bolt is in there, obviously, and you got the nut on there, you can take the transmission jack off, release the pressure, because that's gonna be stuck in there now, and not going anywhere. So don't forget to do it up, uh, then obviously do the bracket on with 10 mil, fit your anti-roll bar link, and at this stage, you're pretty much done. All you have to do is tighten up the three bolts that you got at the top there 
and I think we're pretty much done with the job guys right guys so here we are I've done everything up now so anti robot link is done up the bracket is on the bolt that goes through through the hub to hold the shock is on there and safe uh, three bolts at the top are done up and obviously the nut we done up when we were compressing the springs so that's all good on the top mount like I mentioned earlier all the torque spec for all of this is going to be in the description below guys and all the tools that I've used as well as you've seen the spring compressor worked well on this spring which is good uh, also the day savior that tool for the lower arm lower arm bar uh, that saved us from taking the drive shaft out and doing this tight bolt and like I said, the drive shaft does usually seize up in there and it's going to be a massive pain if that happens. So yeah guys, all I want to say today is please be careful when you're working with a spring because there's a lot of pressure on there, especially if it's broken, it's not completely secure. So please be careful with that. And obviously please do everything up and make sure that everything is tight before you go. And yeah guys, if I miss something or if you need any more information, then please comment below and I'll be more than happy to do it for you guys. Or if there's any other tools that you're interested in or videos, comment below and that will be awesome. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video today guys, don't forget to give us a subscribe and a like. And I'll see you soon guys. Stay safe. Bye.